So Ms. Pooja is a PhD student at uh, Department of Optometry and Vision Sciences, University of Melbourne. Uh, she's an alumnus of Lake School and Manipal Academy of Higher Education. Uh, along with her, Mr. Soman, who is also a PhD student at School of Optometry and Vision Science, UNSW, who is an alumnus of uh, Ishankar Nikhil Academy and Ines Sachem College of Management and Technology. And they have uh, graciously accepted our invitation and uh, together they have recorded the opportunities uh, at for PhD uh, overseas. Let me share the recorded talk. Pooja is with us online and if there are any questions, we'll take it up following this talk. Hello everyone, I am Pooja Nandagopal, PhD student at the University of Melbourne, Australia. So before I begin, I would like to thank Dr. Gopinath and team Achuda for giving me this opportunity to talk to young blooming optometry students out there who are listening keenly to know more about the PhD opportunities abroad. So with that said, let's get started. Applying for a PhD position abroad has a series of steps that require certain skills. So that is why we have split this talk into two parts. So in the first part, I will be listing down a few points that focuses mainly on the skills that parents should equip themselves with so that they can have a smooth PhD process. After that, Mr. Salman will take us through the steps that you will have to know while applying for a PhD position abroad. You can now see my backdrop with a list of points that I would like to discuss. So few of the points that I have listed here might look really obvious to you, but I genuinely want to emphasize on these points because as an undergrad optometry student, we might not really focus on these aspects um, because we might not really know the importance of these things at the undergraduate period. So the first foremost and the most obvious point that you as a student should focus on is to get a good scores. So fortunately or unfortunately your final year grades will decide whether your application should progress to the next step or it should get filtered out. So you can ask me how much should I score? 68%, 80%, 90%? It again depends from universities to universities and that will be mentioned in the university website. But as a general rule, higher the marks, higher is your opportunity to get through the PhD application process. So secondly, it is important for you to enhance your English skills. As a student, learn to write a good, respectful, professional email because email will be the first thing that will introduce you to your supervisor in most of the scenarios and email is going to be the primary mode of communication between you and your supervisor. So along with the email, you will also have to attach certain documents such as SOPs, Statement of Purpose, which is a document that describes or explains your purpose of applying to that particular PhD position. So once you have emailed them with all the supporting documents and your supervisor is happy with whatever you have sent them, and they are convinced with your purpose for applying PhD under them, then they will call you for an interview. So that is a time where you have to talk fluently with them. So that is a time where your speaking skills matters. So you should be fluent enough to answer the questions. You should be fluent enough to express your ideas and so on. And additionally, most of the universities abroad will ask for the English proficiency exam test course. So if you are keen to apply for abroad universities, then my suggestion would be, would be to start preparing for the proficiency exam as early as possible so that you can get your desired scores. So the third skill is the research skills. So I know that you will have a research component in your optometric program during your third year of internship. So you will anyway learn all the process of research in, during that period. But I would like to tell you to take this opportunity a bit more seriously and to 
and try to bring out your work as a publication. So having a publication can enhance your PhD application. So say for example, there are two applicants. So one with 85% marks and two publications, and the other with 85% marks, then definitely the weightage is going to be more for the applicant with publication. And so if you have a PhD, if you have a publication along with good scores, then definitely your chances of processing your application is going to be low. So during your research work, also try to present your work in conferences because that will not only enhance your scientific communication skills, but will also help you to know people. So if you know people from different universities, you can always approach them to get guidance, advice, help. You know, and the fourth thing is during your optometric program, also focus on maintaining a good healthy relationship with your supervisors, with your faculties and peers. So during the PhD process, you will be asked to provide the contact details of, of your referees and the university you apply will contact them directly to know more about your competencies. So if you need a good recommendation letter, then develop a good rapport with your faculties. The fifth point is to improve your internet research skills. So what do I mean by internet research skills? I mean that you should be capable enough to search for the appropriate automatic university that provides a PhD degree. You should be able to find your potential supervisor, the supervisor who is working in the area of interest of your interest and also be able to search for the scholarship positions. So only apart from the PhD uh, university scholarships, you might also have government scholarships or any other uh, agencies to fund you. So you should be able to uh, search for the different scholarship opportunities. So in the fifth point, I would like to tell you, you should be good enough in Googling and you should be good enough to find the required details uh, with a Google search. So apart from that, you will also be able to know the PhD openings through social media platforms such as LinkedIn, Twitter, and there are also other email subscription platforms such as Vision List, TV9 to find a PhD, etc. So if you don't have these professional social media platforms, then create one and start following the universities in which you wish to apply. So apart from all these professional skills, you should also have patience and perseverance because applying for a PhD abroad will take a minimum of six to one year. So it's a long period, so definitely you need patience. And it's easy to get rejection emails, even if they have all the competencies. So perseverance is also important. So my final piece of advice is to start early so that you can work through all of these and you can take your PhD application process in a smooth way. So now that I have bombarded you with a lot of points that uh, a lot of points with the skills that you need to develop before applying PhD uh, position, I will now show you the why these things are important. So let me share my screen. I hope my screen is visible. So this is the website of the University of Melbourne Doctor of Philosophy program. So Department of Optometry and Vision Sciences comes under the Faculty of Medicine, Dentistry and Health Science. So if you want to learn more about the PhD process, the entry requirements and uh, things more uh, in University of Melbourne, then go to this website. So here you have different things, whatever you wanted to learn and go to the entry requirements. So if you click on entry requirements, you will have the list of things that you need before applying for PhD. So the first thing I said to you was the marks. So University of Melbourne asks for 80% of marks, 80% or more. And then they will also consider your research experience and publications if you have any. Uh, research proposal, 
uh, referee reports. So that is why maintaining a good relationship with your faculties are important. And then endorsement from a prospective supervisor. So you should initially contact the supervisor through email and then uh, the supervisor should give a letter which states that they are happy to guide you or to take you as a PhD student. So you will have to attach all of these documents, uh, supporting all of these documents to your application for that to process to the assessment phase. So these are the points that you should do before applying. So if you have all these, then you can apply. And once you apply, the uh, selection committee will all have their certain rules. So they will assess based on their criteria and then give you an outcome. So if you want to know more a detailed description about the selection and admission policy, then you can click through this. So that will give you a more detailed aspect of uh, the things that will be considered during the selection process. And the next thing is English language criteria. So University of Melbourne asks for an English language proficiency test. Uh, so you can go to the university website and see what are the tests that they will accept and what is the minimum scores that you need for each. So this is this will differ from faculty to faculty. So you would have to see which faculty you are applying and what is what should be the uh, standard that you have to meet. And University of Melbourne also has a waiver for English language proficiency. But the terms and conditions are given in the um, website, so go through all of these. So that is where your internet research skills will be available. And then you also have, you can also learn more about the fee and scholarship things. So if you click the fee and scholarship and click on scholarship opportunities, you will get to know what is the deadline with which you have to submit your scholarship application. So this will be updated every year. So you can look at the recent one and see what is the deadline in which by which you have to apply. And if you click at the graduate research scholarship, this is the primary scholarship which will be given to the um, students, the PhD students. So here, if you click on the full benefits, then you will get to know how much scholarship and how much it will be a stipend and what all the other things that your scholarship will um cover so by this i think the students who are listening would know what is your role right now as a uh, as an undergraduate student so that you can go through the admission process in a very smooth way so uh, thank you so much for listening and if you have any questions or if you have uh, if you feel I can help you in any way, please feel free to contact me via LinkedIn or through the email address that is provided in this program. And so, thank you so much for listening and over to you, Sam. Yeah, thank you, Pooja. I just share my screen. Yeah, yeah. I hope it is visible. It is. Yeah, so hello everybody. My name is Homan Sadhu. I am presently a PhD student at the University of New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. So after Pooja has given you all the details how, how to go through a PhD process and how you can prepare yourself, I will just take you through how you can search for potential supervisors in UNSW and uh, and some of uh, the U U.S. universities. And uh, once you have uh, selected your uh, your your supervisor, how you can draft an email and write an SOP and send them, so that your chances of getting selected and uh, you know to highlight your main skills and your interest in the in the field uh, into your SOP. So. Once you have decided to go for 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 PhD, you have to look for potential supervisors. So, what are the potential supervisors I mean here? So, so, let's say you have a special area of interest in walking in dry eye, and you are reading their walks for around three four years during your undergraduate, postgraduate, and being well well uh, accustomed with their way how they work and their area of interest. So, it's always uh, always the 
papers the authors uh, the the author of the paper the, uh, the vision scientist you are you are you are reading and you have cited in your own own research um in your own article so so we usually uh, approach those supervisors because we know how they are working and um, we know our our research interests align with them so this is a unsw website i just show you a quick quickly how you can just uh, just go and search for supervisors so this is i guess similar to all of the other universities as well so you just go to university website then go to research here and we have an option of find the supervisors or project so if you directly click there you you come down to find a supervisors or project so here you have an area so you have to select your school of optometry and vision science so uh, school of school of optometry and vision science and then you get all the, all the supervisor listed here okay for say my one of the supervisors uh, for example let, let's talk about science professor fiona stepleton and then if you click on them click on on the profile you will get the profile of of that supervisors a small biography about what they are doing about their publications and you can email them also in this email id so this is their official email id so every university will have this profile for their uh, for this uh, for the potential supervisors and you can directly email to them uh, requesting um, requesting that you want to be uh, be uh, be a phd student under under her or him okay so so once you have selected your supervisors then the second part is how to draft an email to them and send and send across so when you are drafting an email you have to write what or what we have called it a statement of purpose so this is the statement of purpose what i have written during applying for phd overseas and um, the same this will highlight all of your you know uh, past uh, experiences and why you are interested in that particular matter uh, particular uh, subject and and what are your capabilities and if you have any presentations if you have any publications definitely just mention it here very briefly and tell them what is your uh, you know future perspective so that they can get an idea about if, if you are a, a great match for them and they will extend you an offer so when you are typing an email to them also attach your 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 cv cv like this so this is this is my cv what i have written down there and have sent it to them so these are the main things i think which you you need when when you are sending any email to the supervisors or approaching the supervisors there and yeah maybe you will receive a uh, receive a reply for them sometimes you may you you might not receive a reply with for uh, from them and um, then you go to your next uh, supervisor so you when, when you are searching for supervisor definitely you are not uh, you know um, you are not uh, sending email to one supervisor at a time so when i started i usually send to two to three supervisors definitely not in the same university uh, in in different universities so uh, just a second so if i go there yeah so So, if you want to see about the requirements of Doctor of Philosophy in UNSW, then this is the this is the entry requirements for them. Uh, just a second. Yeah. So, in UNSW, yeah, the entry requirements is like you need a master degree to get admitted in 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 PhD. Sometimes it is not a hard and fast rule that you need a master's. If you have bachelor's and you have good amount of publications as well. and if that criteria matches to to their criteria and and your supervisor likes you then it is also uh, you, you know in a, a kind of uh, other route that you can also get admitted uh, to a, to a phd degree here and once you once you get admitted uh, here you uh, I mean, uh, sorry once you are eligible to get admitted and your supervisors accept your invitation uh, to uh, you know, of phd then you go through a process which is called uh, a scholarship round so in the scholarship round maybe similar participants like you similar candidates like you will 
um, will compete between one another as Pooja told in, in her session and, and then they will give weightage to the candidates which have you know uh, more uh, more marks and definitely more publications they have a certain point system which we don't know definitely how they are you know uh, giving uh, weightage to those candidates but yes definitely a good amount of you know marks during undergraduate postgraduate and um, and the good amount of publications also in uh, some good quality journals gives you much uh, priority during uh, during the application process so this is is the opportunity website of UNSW where they will list any any uh, any any phd position which is open and you can you, you can get through here and then um, send a message uh, email to the uh, to the grs team graduate research team that you are interested here so these are the higher degree student uh, website where there are a lot of you know students those are working give you an initial idea that what the students are doing uh, uh, doing on the on uh, uh, means phd students are working on and how they are the, their career progression is going on throughout throughout their uh, phd uh, phd candidature so this is what uh, what you can also just find out and um, the, the the requirements for for universities in us is is kind of straightforward so there is an option of approaching the supervisors in us but uh, they always take applications online so the uh, during I think during October November their application start the application process starts in US and you have an application goes on I think uh, it's up to up to up to February the application still uh, it opens means uh, it it closes by February yeah so you have to fill the application form and then based on the application uh, based on the application they will decide means i think there is no uh, uh, chances of you know contacting the supervisor directly because in us the phd program is almost five five and a half years where you you are eligible to um, to apply for phd if you if you have a bachelor degree in uh, in india so so it's it's kind of a combined masters and phd program in us so you don't have a uh, you know uh, forehead uh, uh, selection of of uh, of of the supervisors rather than you go through an application process and then if you have if you are selected uh, then uh, you can select the supervisor or, or your uh, area of interest once you get admitted to the university. So that's it. Uh, the, that is how it goes on uh, in in US. And this is a university was Alabama at Birmingham. Uh, so their vision science program. You you need a minimum GPA. So this is great point average where you just convert your percentage into a three point into a four point scale. So this can all also be done with your university as well. And there are some application requirements where where you can go through all uh, all this. Uh, so this is the uh, just a second. So this is the brochure where uh, I think it's a little slow. Yeah. So this is the brochure of that university where you can see all those uh, information and detail. It it will be there. So that toughest part of this getting a PhD is you know cracking the scholarship round even though your supervisors at the university uh, accept it but uh, competing for a scholarship program is is definitely a, the toughest part what you will be facing and um, yes if you are coming from India you need a tuition fee waiver and the living expenses here also as well where the university pays for your living expenses means you will be receiving some sort of stipend monthly to support your uh, to, to support your daily living so that is how it goes on but yes as Pooja says the perseverance is one of the things because when I was trying it is almost three four universities that I have tried and um, it's very very obvious to get rejection emails and uh, but the thing is that as uh, as you get more and more rejection you you grow yourself develop your skills and then apply for the next university and approach the next supervisor that is how it goes on it may take one year two year and maybe more than three to four years to get a phd in your own own field sometimes trying it because once you get it done 
then the life after after that you know you will enjoy your your your, your phd degree and whatever your dreams uh, for uh, dreams uh, were there for the uh, for the next 3 to 4 years okay so so that is how it goes and, and i think i will i will just stop it here and uh, yeah so anything else any questions i think uh, gopi can divert it gopinath can divert it uh, send it to us and we will we will uh, reply to them okay thanks very much dr gopinath and achuta for giving the opportunity to share all this experience and i hope many of your of your of uh, students from your university could like I could, I could like to see some in my university as well in the coming years. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Pooja and uh, Solomon, for the excellent talk, which uh, I think uh, even uh, uh, not for now, maybe for the next couple of years, the entry requirements and uh, the detailing the, uh, of how to apply in US as well as in Australia, specific for PhD in optometry is like clear, very clearly explained. Uh, the, I think that the, these, uh, out of all these things, uh, as a PhD, as I was a PhD scholar, this type of clarity in terms of applying for an uh, undergraduate or a postgraduate student to a, a PhD position is not available. So this is going to be a, a big, uh, like uh, information for them. So uh, I don't see any much of questions. Like uh, I think most of the questions which are popped up has been explained by Pooja and uh, Soman. Do you have any concluding words uh, from uh, Pooja and um, Pooja? Can you can you share any any concluding words so that I will take up the next talk. I can't hear you, Pooja. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I can hear you, yeah. Okay. So I think everything is covered in the talk. The only thing is you uh, now we will have to focus on marks because that is going to be the first uh, filtering thing uh, which universities will take into account. So focus on marks. And having a publication is an addition to you like because each university will have a different scoring system for their scholarships. So marks will give you a first line of entry and then if you have additional things like research experience or publications or whatever it's just going to boost up your points so that your chance of getting a scholarship is going to uh, increase so otherwise i think marks and english language proficiency scores are uh, very important before applying to any uh, uh, abroad universities um, thank you so much um, awesome presentation and uh, it's an extremely generous uh, sort of, you know, a very, very nice of you guys to share your experiences because uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's a very generous of you to do that. Um, you know, people generally tend to hold back and not talk about how to do things. Um, very, very nice of you to do that. Uh, because sharing... I think it is, it is more, it, it was a difficulty which we faced when we were applying. Right. So right. we didn't have like a lot of information. So we searched, we did a lot of homeworks. So we thought this will help students so that they can start preparing early and they can apply. Their process Absolutely. can be very small. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, um, you know, I remember way back when I went to the UK, I had uh, no information whatsoever. So everything I had to literally claw my way, find information, you know, hit at all doors before I could find, like, even if I found the window slightly opening, get into it and then try and figure out how to get to the door. So very, very generous of you guys to share your experiences. Really appreciate uh, the talk by the two of you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.